So this is project number three. It is Berlin, the character Berlin from uh, the Netflix series Money Heist, also known as the House of Paper, La Casa de Papel. I tried my best. Um, it is by the very, very talented uh, designer uh, Beppe Meda. I really hope I have pronounced that correctly as well. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to painting this. It's got insanely detailed face. Um, I really do like the mask. And I just think overall it's a really nice model. I've overprinted on the money as I want to do something a little bit extra on the base. Uh, but essentially I intend to break this up into the reds, everything else on the body and gun, uh, then the face and mask, a separate film, then the money, and finally just putting together the base and the final model. Focusing on the red, the first thing that I want to do is add corn red over the entire model. Um, I might try and not touch on the skin, but it really doesn't matter for the moment. Um, I, the reason I'm going for corn red, I think I mentioned before, I've run out of Mephistons, which is slightly lighter. But I've also seen a lot of pictures where there are a lot of folds in this, and I do think it will make a much nicer, deeper tone. Well, I'm not sure if you can see, but put the first thinned out uh, base coat on. It's still a bit streaky. Probably hasn't got a really strong coverage. So I'm going to wait for this to dry, add a second thin coat just to ensure it has a, a nice strong uh, base red. So now I've added the second layer of the corn red just to kind of um, just make sure I've got a solid base that I'm working on. And because probably the bottom half of his body is going to be really heavily surrounded with money, I do just want to create a darker shade there and just add to the transition of colour that is going to be coming from above. So I've taken my typical cheap red paint um, and I've put that in this piece here I've got my corn red and I've watered that down there and I've mixed the two I've got that one in this pot here now I carry on keeping my brush as watery as possible as I said dark at the bottom so I just lay it on it really doesn't matter now if it is super thin I want to keep it so that it, it doesn't dry too quickly straight into the second pot it's still too thick again there we go see it's essentially just a water coat over the initial red color which is why the base needs to be so strong and that's pretty much up to the the bum essentially i want to make sure that i am still blending these two um, as i said first coat can be a little bit more haphazard and now going up to the, the much lighter red again still very watered down just taking that over the top of this I will go back in a second just to make sure I'm neatening up any uh, of these pooling areas, but I just want to make sure I get the full coat as quickly as possible. And then I will go back round to kind of, yeah, just neaten up. So let's get it all on. I don't know why, maybe I'm panicking more than I'm filming. Um, okay. Again, you can kind of start mixing it up again, just to throw some of that corn red back in the base because obviously the, the paint's going to really run down as well so there's going to be that element where you need to make sure you neaten up so that each color doesn't just run into run into the, um, the other sometimes I'll just slightly flip it get that in the middle and hopefully you'll see so when this dries I'll add a second coat and it will just add a very very gradual transition to uh, the red itself and now I just want to dry off my brush. See just some of these pools, they're a little bit way off, say a little, they're way too much. The first coat dry and it's pretty much non-noticeable. Um, I have decided just to use the Sicil Red, so I've gone up with Wild Wider Red as well, just so I can kind of maybe bring a slightly higher highlight on the second coat. So pretty much same again, which is the darkest. Get that over the, the bottom of the feet. So the bottom doesn't really matter because it's already coated with the base. I'm just getting it so that I can make sure I have a blend. Again, even the second line, I feel like it's already has its transition. Move up a color tone. There we are. Now we can start to see, get it to blend in together. So if I'm going on camera, so if I was on here, I want to kind of get about halfway up his arm. 
most of the front of the arm as well. And whilst I'm on that colour, I don't want to forget the back. So I try and get as much of the solid piece that I want. I don't need to necessarily water it down, I just want to bring it down onto this other colour. Then I can maybe just water off my brush a tiny bit and help blend those two. And then finally up to the top colour. See it does look quite stark now, but I hope that on a second coat as this dries, it will be just a nice little shine where the light comes from. So again, just want to get this over the, the top half of his body. I don't want to forget this part of the uh, his hood. I'm hoping, just dry that off. And you can see already some pooling here, so I can just bring that down. Don't necessarily need to pull it off, but you can just move it around some of these pools just to help with this gradient. Um, if I just dry my shit brush off again, bring that down a bit, bring that color down. And I mean, that's all I'm really doing. I think by the looks of it, I may even have a third just to really help with this transition. All right, so hopefully you can now see what I mean. Um, it still might look a little bit patchy, but I'm still gonna do a wash and a dry brush. But you've got a much darker base, building up to a much lighter highlight. So I'm now happy with that. Um, by the way, I added uh, two extra coats. Um, I just want to slap on a little bit of watered down Caraber Crimson Shade, so red wash, just to help bring these colours together. And most importantly, to fall into all of the recesses to really bring... Uh, bring the sort of well, bring the model out as it were. So, just going to go around all of this. I'll be honest, not the best brush to be adding a shade with, but hey ho. And then I'll come back. So, if you can now see the shade has dried, it's got into kind of some of the deeper areas that I wanted it to. Um, and at the same time, it's somewhat retained that um, transition of, of red. So to help build on that now, um, I want to continue doing a dry brush with the same three reds, so Corn Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Wild Rider Red. Um, because this is quite light, I'm going to start off at the top in the, 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 the middle red, so uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to dry brush that. That's a little bit wet there. Um, all the way from the top down to about the middle and then I'm going to start off with the corn red further down now dry brush the <clears throat> uh, Evil Sun Scarlet down from the top and the corn red uh, down from the bottom I added quite a heavy dry brush from the bottom just to really cover some inconsistencies um, and I hope you can start to see that even as you add it it really shows the transition you've already applied before um, but as I said, at the top of this model, I did want to kind of bring it up a little bit further. So I'm just going up to the Wild Rider Red. And now I just want to start picking out this uh, top part of the model. So I'm going to go around again, all over the, this top half, this line here. Right. Some of the key parts. Um, I want to really hit this line. Um, the reason is when his face goes on, he's just facing off. I want the light to be coming and hitting this side of his face and the gun that he's going to be holding. So I do want to highlight this particular strip and this part of the thigh here as well. So I'm going to work around again with the Wild Rider Red, shoulders, this strip and the thigh. So I've now uh, dry brushed pretty much the shoulders down to about the pecs, down this strip, and just try to hit some of these um, obvious creases as well, take over the shoulder. As I said, I want the light to be coming in from this side. Um, so now I've done, I kind of went over the top on the Wild Rider Red, just because I'm now going to bring it back down, because I felt like the dark corn red wasn't red enough for his actual jumpsuit. Um, so I was looking back at the pictures and it feels like the jumpsuit is a pretty solid red. It's really only the recesses that I'd want to be, uh, I guess, a darker red. So I've created my watery consistency with Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, the mid-red that I was using. 
I'm now going to just very lightly go over this model, the entire thing, um, as quickly as possible really, because it will dry, and then making sure there's no pooling. So once I get everything off my brush, I'm going to just quickly start uh, neatening this area up. So I'll come back once all of this is dried. So that watery consistency is now dried and hopefully you can see it's brought up the darker tones, slightly brought down the lighter tones, but I think brought everything up to a more <laughs> a redder tone. Um, so that's what I was going for. Um, but as I mentioned, it has brought down the slightly lighter tone. So I've gone back to my Wild Rider Red, rub it into the brush, create the dry brush. And I pretty much again, just wanna bring up the top where it's been slightly muted. Um, I am going to go over with a brush now after this, but I just find it helps with that that gradual shading as you go down. A heavy dry brush of the Wild Rider Red. I feel like that's my transition pretty much done. I do want to kind of bring them out now with some layers, but before I do, I'm going back to my Carabao Crimson Shade, so the red wash with a small brush. I'm just picking out some of these areas where one, well, the shade probably hasn't covered where it should, um, and two, just things that I think should stand out a little bit more, like the pockets. Um, so, sorry if that was in the camera. Just pretty much nothing on the brush, just very lightly going around each part. Um, Again, on this front side, not, oh, so not only do I want to get the sides, but I also want to get things like these creases as well. So I'm going to go all the way around, but I just feel like it will help add some depth. A little bit of depth. Um, I don't need to worry about the straps because I'm going to be painting them brown, putting Agravax Earth Shade on, and that shade will inevitably shade the red as well. Um, I've tried to add a little bit around here just so I can work out where I need to be putting the black. Um, so now I want to go back to my layering paints. Um, I'm going to start off with the the Evil Sun Scarlet, so the mid-range. Really, really watery now on the smallest brush. And I just want to start picking out some of these lines just to help. Oh my God, sorry, my camera. Um, just to help kind of create more of a solid gradient right at the top. This will, if you, if you can see how watery it is, will take at least two to three coats, but it will enable me to build it up. Let's decide how I kind of add to the transition um, I've already created. So um, I'm just gonna go around with this really, really watery uh, mid-red highlight everything and you can see that I'm already going over the top as well I will I'm just using that as a way to work my way down and then I'll come over with this and work my way slightly lesser down I'm not sure how well I can see this in the camera um, but I want you to kind of see that I'm trying to build up still this mid red color a bit more towards the top so getting more solid colors at the top um, like big spaces like this I'm happy to fill in a bit more help just hopefully you can see you're getting a bit more of a, a stronger red at the higher points. Um, but as I get lower down, I'm just trying to keep it a lot more uh, focused on the lines. Um, just so I kind of think it helps as we work down the transition, you have a stronger mid red and then it just kind of peters off as you, um, as you reach the leg. Okay, and so that's how it looks after the Eagle Sun Scarlet. Um, hopefully you can see it's brought out a stronger um, strength of red at the top, slowly sort of brought it down till it's kind of gradual and then non-existence and then a bit stronger on the right, or on his left leg, um, yeah, less so on this side, just because I want the light to be kind of coming down and this leg's slightly stepping forward. I'm now going to go on to the Wild Rider Red, again, probably even more so watered down, I really don't want this to kind of overbear and when it's not dry brushed on it is going to really show up so i just want to kind of start picking out some of these 
um, tops of the creases. And I'll probably want to go this way just so that I don't end up with that dot, as you can see. I uh, prefer the, to end at the top. Sorry, I don't know if I'm in the picture there. Um, to some of these as well, just bring up some of the areas that I think are going to have the highest or an extra uh, light source. So obviously a lot of head edge highlighting. Um, sorry. But also maybe some of these these creases here. I don't really need to be that neat. I just want to kind of catch on some of these corners. Um, yeah, pretty much I'm going to go around and try and just bring this to the higher parts of these lines up. So hopefully you can see the um, transition on the red. Arguably is a lot of work to for what you get, but for a model where it is predominantly red, I think it's just worth me putting on those extra layers, the extra wash to, I don't know, I think it's a little bit nicer than just the standard dry brush. So I'm now going to seal this in with a matte acrylic, uh, and then I'll come back. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, The matte is still slightly drying, so I don't want to touch with my hands. Um, hopefully you can see the sort of transition effect and I think the actual matte has brought or the matte varnish sorry has brought the red out a little bit which has worked in my favour. Um, I now have my cheap black and uh, brown paint so just two cheap acrylic bottles which I'm going to use a still relatively detailed brush because I really don't want to have to have any hassle of neating up neatening up the uh, the red and I'm going to quickly go around now and just highlight the black parts of the boots um, and the red for the straps. Oh, sorry, the brown for the straps. <laughs> 